Okay, Liver McKenzie, day 57. Um, second day of treatment today with chemo. Luckily, it was a, it was a short one. I say luckily, it's, it's nothing luckily about having chemo. But luckily, it's, um, it's a short day. It was an hour and a half today. As opposed to the six and a half hours last week. <coughs> That'll be it now till 1st of June, I think. It's got to do its job. I've got to then obviously have what they call recovery, which this is probably going to be the week where my immune system's going to start switching off. Um, my, my blood count, my white blood cell count today, they said was okay. I don't know what okay means. So obviously it's not bad, bad, but obviously there's a lot of questions. How have I felt? How have I been over the last week? Have I got my sepsis card available in case I need to go in hospital with it? Um, the first week of chemo, first four days, first four days, constipation. Jesus, I wouldn't believe. And um, like acid reflux happened at night especially. I mean, I woke up a few times at night, thought it was a heart attack, it was obviously it was acid reflux. But um, that was that was painful. Down to the medication, not just the, um, the chemo, but also the anti-sickness pills, things like that. Um, Constipation, what was that till like from Thursday till Sunday? Everything's okay as, as it could be, it's not as good as it normally is, but it's okay. Um, croaky voice, I've noticed that more. I've gotten far more of a croak, which is a side effect. It's not sore, it's not sore here, it's not like a sore throat, it's just a croaky voice, which is a chemo side effect again. Um, So it was, it was better than it could have been. It could have been a lot worse, I suppose. But obviously this week now, they do say it's about day 10. So today is day seven of chemo. So I've got another three days really before there's a good chance that my immune system's just gonna shut off and then my white cell counts zero. That's the risk then of um, infections and things that normally your body would fight but mine won't be able to because of the treatment. Um, got an appointment in Stoke that I had to cancel because of obviously it was on a chemo day and I can't, obviously chemo is more important. That'll be whenever they send me a letter for that. I think the, the Stoke one will be a discussion about obviously my, my operation. I don't know what the operation entails, but they'll obviously go through in a bit more detail. Hopefully there's going to be no other shock with that. But again, who knows? There might be. I would hope not, but again, this is stuff that I'm going to want to get to it. Um, I felt okay myself. I've not been too ill. My headspace has been pretty good. I haven't been low, low. I've had, you know, I've had little moments. I've had little moments where I just get tearful for no reason. <clears throat> but I've not had like low moments, you know, like I did a few weeks ago. We had a week of it. My um, obviously my voice sounds a bit weird, but that's the croakiness from the chemotherapy and the the, the, the medication. It's not me being down and depressed. I'm not really down and depressed. It's still, it's still a lot to get your head around some days. But this is what it is and this is how we're going to do it. Um, obviously again, loads of support off family and friends again today, which, you know, it's, it's very much appreciated. I know there's nothing people can do, but you know, I know that there's people that generally do care and are concerned about my well.
myself here and the, my, my, my treatment and my recovery. So that was, you know, that's nice. And it is nice. It's always nice. You know, people messaging me, private messaging me, you know, messages on Facebook, all you know, little things that shows that people are concerned about my, my welfare, which is nice. Um, Chris came with me again today. So luckily it was a short one, so we weren't there too long. It's hot in the uni as well, very hot. Um, fell asleep a couple of times. Fell asleep in and out sleeping all the way home in the car, to be honest. It was, and that's what I feel now. It's tired. It's tired and drained. Um, dripping this hand today, oh my god, you can see there's a mark. It's like that's probably the first time I've ever bruised off any needles or anything, but that it was like the vein was sore before it went in there. So it's been it's that's probably gonna bruise up quite nicely and it probably will bruise now because as my immune system's dropping, the bruising and the stuff by all accounts is, is much more common. Um and my blood test and the doctors Wednesday, they as far as I'm aware from what they said today, my bloods are okay, you know. That's obviously what the white cell counts for and various other things. That's not an issue at the moment. Possibly will be in the future, I don't know. Um, I'm just hoping now that with this next two weeks of rest slash recovery, that I can just get through as best I can without having to worry about um, illness. Things like that. I don't. I mean, this. I don't know. I won't know this now until until it happens or it's 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 ready for the next treatment. The next treatment again is going to be a long one. Um, so far, like I say, side effects. I mean, I've got no heel off yet, which is nice. You know, I'm happy with that. But again, that could come in the future. Um, it's mainly tiredness for me. I can get tired from just sitting down. You know, you know, I don't even have to do anything to be tired. I can just, you know, wake up, come downstairs, um, have a cup of tea, and then be really tired and ready to go back to sleep after a cup of tea. You know, it's just it's silly things. It's things that I've never been, I've never been that tired over so over, over things before. You know, understanding like a hard day's work, hard day's grafting, but for just waking up and having a cup of tea is hardly um, tired. It should make you tired, but it does. Well, it does with me anyway. Um, it was obviously I didn't go to the uni till late today, so there was still a fair few people in, but it wasn't as busy. It was obviously the early mornings when you got people in for long days, but there's still enough people out. You know, it's not um, it's not shrinking with the amount of people in each room of a cancer. At the minute, I mean, I'm, I'm good. I feel good. I'm not headspace-wise. I mean, not not physically, but mentally, I feel good. Um, I'm on antibiotics now, which I've got to take for ten days. That's obviously to come in to, to kick in before my immune system drops down. Um, but again, any bit of help, they'll do it. I'll take it. You know, the more help I get with it, the better, because I don't really want to be... <clears throat> I don't want to be hurt. I don't want to be hurt in nothing else. I think I don't want to be bloody lying in bed, you know, in pain. That, I think that's the thing. Um, I don't know what this chemo is doing yet. I don't know. I mean, I'm not going to know until I have the CT scan, but I don't know if it's... Um, if it's killing my tumour off yet, or if it's it takes a few few treatments, I mean obviously it takes a few because they wouldn't give me so many if it was quick um, hopefully it has hopefully it will um, but again I don't know I'll have to wait until the CT scan for that I'm just hoping at the end of the CT scan they go yeah there's nothing there that's then one big whew, out the way and I know that at least the cancer side of it is done it's just the um, surgery the psychological side as well 
psychological side. I mean, the psychological side with the um, the chemos. It, it does get in your head a lot. You do um, you do dwell on things a bit more. It's that I don't know. Maybe it's that thing of um, when you're younger. I don't know. You feel immortal when you're younger, don't you? You don't feel like you know you're indestructible. Nothing's gonna stop you doing what you want to do when you want to do it um, you just you know you feel invincible um, things like this make you realize you're not you're not invincible you're not you know you're not bulletproof um, so I'm 52 I'm not old I know when like when you're 18 19 20 you think know, 40s ancient but you know I'm 52 I'm not an old man might look at some days, but I'm not. I don't feel an old man. I don't feel old, old. And it's that realization that, I'm, especially as you get older, you get a realization that you're not going to be here forever. Which doesn't sort of end your end younger days, but as you get older, it starts. You suddenly understand that your life's got a time limit on it, you know. And obviously with my cancer, it's, um, it's brought that to the front, massively to the front, that there is a, you know, there, there's something in my body that has got a possibility of shortening my lifespan, which, you know, I don't want that, I don't want that at all, I want to live as long as I can, I don't want to have a happy life, I don't want to be worrying about how long have I got left. What will I be able to do? Can I? You know, I don't. Nobody wants to worry about that. Everybody just wants to to live, and do what they want to do. But, but you know, it's 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 a realization that's as you get older, you get you get it more. But obviously, when you get something like this, it hits you a lot harder and a lot quicker. And you do realize that things that you thought the thing things that you thought were important aren't really that important. You know, things that you thought. Or this, or that, or that. It's not that important, you know. Your health is. Your relationships are. Your family are. Your friends are. They're important because they're the ones that, when something happens to you, whatever you've, you know, you've done, however you've influenced and affected these people, that's where you live on from. It's from the memories and the stories that they tell you. And they'll tell all these stories about you and all this, 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 but that's where your legacy lies. It doesn't lie in um, how fast your broadband is, or if I've got the nice tally, or uh, how nice my car is. It, you know, those things, yeah, they're material, but they're not essential to the to what's left in your legacy. Um, last time on the last video one person I forgot and I don't even know how he slipped my mind was uh, Dave Pye he's another one he's another one that bend over backwards to help you out if you needed help but no you know not for praise not for thanks not for anything just because that's the type of guy he is you know and I got a lot I got lots of friends like that but you know there's, there's a core group of friends that are you know above and beyond which I love you know I love them all and they know I love them all. Um, that's pretty much it. I've got nothing more to add at the minute. I mean obviously if I get any side effects and ill effects now off the chemo I'll um, I'll show that. You know, it won't be a nice thing to see, but I think people do need to see that there's a horrible, horrible side to this. It's not just um you know, feeling a bit tired or feeling a little bit down. There's there, there is a nasty side to this but if I can at least get somebody to see that and go, <clears throat> I don't want that, I don't want to go through any of that, I need to go down to the doctors, which again is the underlying message, you know your body better than anybody else, you feel something's wrong, go see the doctors, if you still feel something's wrong, ask for a second opinion of a different doctor, just get yourself checked if you think something's wrong, don't wait, don't ignore it, don't brush it under the carpet, don't pretend it doesn't happen. Don't pretend it'll never happen again. I did. I thought I was a one-off. And it happened twice and it's like, okay, maybe not. And then ignored it again. Until stage three aggression.
press a bladder cancer, which let's be honest, nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear the word cancer, nobody wants to hear stage bloody three, and nobody definitely wants to hear the word aggressive. So, you know, if you can get yourself checked out, check yourself out, get it done. Peace of mind for you, peace of mind for your family, peace of mind for your friends, peace of mind for everybody, but more for you. You're the one that has the card, you know, holds the cards in her hands to do this, and only you can do this. subscribe, share, get this message out to as many people as possible so they won't have to go through any of this, ever, you know, the only way they'll go through is watching me, they won't have to do it themselves and I don't want people to go through this shit, I want, you know, I want people to realise that this is, this is not nice, this is not pleasant, this is affecting everything around me, every part of my life now, from the moment I wake up to the moment I sleep. I can quite imagine when I'm asleep, Chris is probably still worrying because what if my breathing changes while I'm asleep? What if this happens while I'm asleep? I don't know if I'm asleep to it, you know? And this thing affects everybody, every single person. So um, thank you very much again for watching. Um, you know, comment if you want to. Any if you, Comment if you've got questions, you know, just ask questions and I'll, I'll answer them. I have no problem in answering I'm not hiding anything from anybody. So, you know, if there's things you want to know, ask. I'll let you know as best as I can of what I know about what's going on. So, um, yeah, thank you very much indeed, and see you soon.